Hello, Blazing Beauties. I am Frank, and this is my co-host, Ozzy the Dog, the best dog in the land. I haven't done a podcast in a while. Uh, I didn't want my dog to bark and panic in the other room, so I thought I would invite him into the room. Uh, he's excited to see you all as well. So today's uh, podcast is on sleep. I read this amazing book called Why Zebras Don't Get uh, Ulcers. And the author's name is Robert M. Spolsky. If you guys have a chance, you have to check out his uh, podcasts and uh, videos for Stanford. He's a psychology teacher for Stanford University. And he's amazing, amazing, amazing teacher. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about sleep. So, actually, in our generation, we are more sleep-deprived than ever before. So, we're averaging out at about seven hours to seven hours and five minutes of sleep a night. And we're supposed to actually get between 9 and 10 hours. And I know some of you who are hearing this, 9 or 10 hours, you're like, what is he, crazy? I have a family, I have kids, there's no way I could get 9 to 10 hours of sleep. Uh, and the thing is, there's this athlete, his name is Elliot Holtz. I, I hope I pronounce his name right, I never get it right. And he had a bunch of injuries, and he actually said that his injuries started healing when he took his sleep from 8 hours to 10 hours. And for the longest time, I've been sleeping nine and a half to 10 hours, and I felt guilty. I felt like there was something wrong with me for needing a lot of sleep. And the more I, I'm studying and looking at sleep, the more I realize it's actually a normal range of sleep. If you're physically active, you're moving around a lot, and you're, you're highly creative, or you're thinking up a lot of stuff. Everything being considered, there is people that, that need four to five hours of sleep, but these are genetic uh, anomalies. Like apparently Donald Trump or Leonardo da Vinci, I'm not saying the two are at the same intellectual level, but uh, they both need or needed four to five hours of sleep a night. Uh, there is this doctor, his name is, actually I have the book here, hold on a second. His name is Matthew Walker, PhD, and he talks about, uh, his book is called Why We Sleep. And he was asked by Joe Rogan, he says, what's the right uh, amount of hours of sleep? Could somebody get by on six hours of sleep? He said, off the board, 99% of all people cannot get by on just six hours of sleep. You need easily between eight and 10. And if you're busy and active, 10 is more, uh, more the range that you should be aiming at. Okay, so reasons why you should need to sleep. Uh, no, it's not a waste of time. No, it's not preventing you from doing uh, extra work. And if you're by the mentality uh, that you'll sleep when you're dead, you'll probably die sooner anyways. So this is why you need to sleep, okay? Your body has two main functions which it operates by. Your nervous system, actually, I should say, has two main functions which it operates by. There's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, okay? So the sympathetic is the active part of your nervous system. It's if you're being chased, you run, uh, you freak out, you're panicking, you're stressed, you're frantic. The parasympathetic is relax and restore, and also sleep. So you digest in parasympathetic. You relax, you restore, and your system digests. And you also sleep in parasympathetic. You relax, you restore, you regenerate, etc., etc., etc. So if you're in sympathetic where you're always constantly nervous and anxious, not only are you not sleeping, but you're not digesting. And this is where sleep becomes important. If you're not digesting, you are not healing. Therefore, if you're not sleeping, you're not digesting, you're not healing. So most of modern disease comes from those two things, lack of sleep, therefore unfinished, unactualized digestion, and because of this unactualized digestion, you are not able to heal. Now, most disease starts in your colon. So what happens is this, okay? The last phase of your sleep is where you enter into Chinese medicine, you enter into colon energy, okay? So every organ has a, has a cycle, uh, has a time cycle and the last cycle right before you you wake up it's entering into the colon energy okay if you wake up uh, like three in the morning five in the morning you haven't completed some of the cycles necessary for you to reach that energy so that when you wake up you're able to dispel so now the first part of the morning is actually uh, your body is geared at elimination so you slept, you had a full night cycle of sleep, okay? You wake up, you also had that your digestion was completed, and therefore now you're ready to go to the washroom, 
okay? If you wake up midstream, notice every time you may wake up midstream throughout the night or you have to force yourself to wake up earlier than you'd like, there's a very good chance in those days you'll be more constipated than you would like. This is because you have not completed digestion and there's a, it creates a certain level of constipation. Creating constipation obviously creates a backup in your system and therefore you're not healing at the pace that you could be healing. I want to make this very brief. If you're not sleeping enough, try and create a scenario where you're sleeping a little bit more. Try and see how this affects your bowel movement. Try and see how this affects your temperament. Also, please don't have anything that irritates your system past a certain time. So if you like to drink coffee, make sure you're having your coffee in the morning, early afternoon. Every cup of coffee that you have after 5 o'clock, the caffeine will be with you during your sleep cycle. So this will mean that you're not going to sleep as efficiently. There is this chemical that needs to produce, and it is produced by your third eye, but it's actually called the pineal gland. There's this chemical called melatonin. If you drink too much coffee or have too many uh, foods that irritate your system, what happens is you're preventing the pineal gland from producing this melatonin. It is the melatonin that starts to create the sleep cycle, makes you go into deep sleep, and creates all those rhythms throughout the night where you can sleep efficiently. Now, when you wake up, it's, it's because the sun is coming in and your, your body kind of knows that it's time to wake up. This melatonin becomes serotonin. Serotonin is what makes you happy, joyful, gleeful, and happy to be alive. If you did not produce adequate melatonin and you did not sleep adequately, the melatonin won't produce into an adequate amount of serotonin to make you happy and joyful and gleeful and happy to be alive throughout the day. So this is another reason why it's important to sleep. So to recap, I don't want to make this video super long. You want to sleep because it calms down your nervous system. You want to sleep because it helps you to digest. You want to sleep so that it promotes healing. And you want to sleep so that it promotes serotonin. Please don't say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I don't want to come to funerals I don't need to go to. If you have any questions or you want to leave donations, you can uh, write me at dragonflowyoga at gmail.com. If you want to chat just to chat, you can hit me up on Instagram under Frank Vaccaro or Facebook, Frank Vaccaro, not my. Stay. Ozzy says goodbye too, by the way. He's relaxing on the floor now.